first thing I always tell a bride is, what is your vision? Think about what it is you want to look and feel like for your wedding, right? Because you go through and you see all these uh, Instagram and Pinterest and you can get completely overwhelmed because every every gown is more gorgeous than the gown before. But you have to think about what is, what is it that you want. So are you doing something on a beach and therefore you want more of a, your, your wedding vibe is more easy, breezy, relaxed, you're gonna dance nights away and that sort of stuff. So if that's the case, then the big poofy princess ball gown with the long cathedral veil and the tiara may not be the vibe that you're looking for. So really before you start getting influenced, not just by what's online, but also by family and friends, is have a good idea of what it is you want to look and feel like on your wedding day. But here is my philosophy. Brides ask me all the time, Sarah, what dress is gonna work best for my body type? And what I always tell them is a dress that's gonna work best for your body type is a dress you feel the most confident in, hands down, right? So you may see a lot of these lovely mermaid gowns and it's boom, bam, boom, right? And you feel like you have the body type for it, and you may, but when you put on the dress, do you feel like a bride? So, you know, the, the first thing I say is whatever makes you feel good. But as a general rule, and this is one of the reasons I wrote the book that I recently wrote, The Jamaican Bride's Ultimate Guide to Wedding Planning, is because a lot of the information that's out there are geared towards the more Eurocentric bride. So I've seen, well, if you're very hippie, you should wear an A-line gown to minimize the hips. Which Jamaican woman you know want to minimize our hips on our wedding day? Right? It's just a fact. So what we want to do is show up the curves, whether we're a size two or a size 22. So if you have, what they call that pear shape, so you're smaller on top, if you're down on the bottom, a mermaid style is fabulous for you, right? If you are, um, if maybe you don't have the wider hips and maybe you're a little bit more straight, then an A-line or a ball gown that's gonna give the illusion of smaller waist and wider hips will give you that more hourglass figure. So for any bride, I can almost give any bride that hourglass figure, once it is that she's open enough to say, okay, maybe not a mermaid, try something else on. All right, so the first process is to schedule an appointment. I tell brides all the time, purchasing a wedding dress or renting a wedding dress is not like going and buying a pair of jeans. It is a once in a lifetime experience that needs to be treated as such, so we schedule an appointment. When you come for an appointment at Miss Bridal Boutique, we set that time aside for you and your entourage, whoever that may be. Um, then we sit down and we talk. I wanna know not just about what you're looking for in your wedding dress, but I wanna know what kind of vibe are you having for your wedding? Is it a small wedding? Is it a big wedding? Is it a more traditional wedding? Is it a church wedding? Do we need to look at proper coverage for the different uh, churches, that church that you may be getting married in? Once we figure that out and you tell me, I then say, okay, what are you looking for in terms of fabric, style, all that kind of stuff? Um, based on what you tell me, I'm going to take everything in. I may not think that what you tell me is the right thing for you, but that's okay. The first thing I'm gonna do is give you what I have that matches those prerequisites for you. Once we put that on, then you can tell me and the, the people that you brought with you that, that you trust, if it is, this is the right style for you. And if it's not, then we move on and try something else. A lot of times brides will come to me with pictures of dresses that are custom dresses that have been custom made for that bride, on that for that wedding, for that picture. We rent guns, we sell as well, but we rent. So when we rent, while we can do alterations to make sure you get a good fit, I may not nine times out of 10 be able to customize to the level that you want me want that customization. Now, if you have the budget for that, if you have thousands of US dollars to spend on a wedding gown, then definitely we can look at customization. But what we try and do, like for example, one of the trends that uh, have come back since I would probably say the eighties is sleeves. Sheer, lace, fabulous beaded sleeves. They're fabulous, but they're not practical for rental. I can't take them in and take them back out. They don't stand up well to the cleaning process. So as much as you may want a full long sleeve lace gown with a full lace beaded back, it's not practical for me. So what we do is we find alternatives. So every time I say to a bride, let me try a bolero, she flips. Because everybody has an idea, you know, look at jackets, right? That, that, that put a little bead up, but it just looks like hell in a, in, a, uh, in a hay basket. So, but my boleros are not. When I add a bolero to a gown, it just takes the gown to the next level and gives the bride the coverage that she needs, 
the elegance that she needs and the look that she needs. So we just really try to find that balance. And I find once a bride comes to an appointment with an open mind, it's easy sailing from there. I tell brides all the time, the most important thing, next to a good strapless bra, the most important thing you can bring to your bridal appointment is an open mind. One of my designer gowns is going to cost for purchase from a low of about 1,500 US up to almost 3,000 US. These are the same dresses that you can rent from me for 60,000 J, right? And so the price is gonna be one of the first considerations a bride's gonna have to decide between renting and purchasing. The other thought process she's gonna have to think about, does she want to keep this dress? Maybe she wants to keep it and um, re change it up a little bit for her 25th anniversary or give it to her daughter or cut out some of the lace and make her first child's christening gone with it, right? Or something like that. If it is you're a very sentimental person and you want to be able to keep that dress and you have the budget, then definitely buy. And then the last consideration is some brides are not comfortable with the fact that, oh, somebody was wearing this dress before me, right? A lot of brides don't really care. If it is that that's really important to you and you can't manage the thought of, of that, then definitely purchase. But the, the first consideration usually is the budget and what the bride and groom can afford. I tell brides all the time, sometimes you have to kiss a couple of frogs before you find the bricks. So, and that's the process. And then once we find the dress and she said yes, and we go ahead and confirm everything, then we talk about all the details because we need fittings. Just because you're trying the dress today, you're getting married nine months from now, doesn't mean that the dress is gonna fit you the same, right? And so we always have to do fittings with our seamstress to make sure that the dress fits perfectly. So Bliss Bridal Boutique, we are on Instagram, Facebook. Um, our Instagram and Facebook is Bliss Bridal JA. We are also, our website is blissja.com and we are at 79 Arden Road. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, we're Andre and Lisa, and you're watching Forever I Do.